kind of quick chemistry thing. Yeah. Uh, whether you suggest any anything, sir, like uh, whether I need to be specific in these things or uh, how to do a PhD, proper PhD or something. Say the question. Say the question again, sir. I am uh, very much interested to do my PhD, sir. Yeah. I have an idea to do in uh, photochemistry as well as in yeah. chemistry, sir. As well as in chemistry, sir. But uh, I am at uh, some uh, disturbance, sir, whether I need to go for a PhD or not. And of course, you should go for a PhD. Uh, that's a, that's a, a key to uh, make new things and make things happen in particular in a very rapidly evolving society as the one here in Kerala. Uh, I see a lot of activity and I see a lot of uh, promise for future and if you are talented, uh, try to get a PhD in, uh, in one of the really well equipped laboratories and you, will, uh, you are bound to have success. Yes, so thank you so much sir, for your work. Yeah. Uh, the only main reason I am here for the conference is because of this. <laughs> thank you sir, thank you so much. I would like to add, actually, making a PhD is, uh, is not only getting a PhD, is a development of your brain and your mind. So that is why you should take the PhD. It's not because it's necessary for a particular job, it's actually maturing you as a scientist, as a human being able to think. Uh, thank you for the interesting lecture, sir. My question is this. This one makes a lot of noise. So. Uh, at the level of uh, peptide bonding, there is something fundamental which your predecessors have missed and which you have discovered which made uh, click chemistry possible. What was that fundamental principle? Or fundamental yeah, property? The, the fundamental principle, what, dis the, uh, what distinguishes this particular chemistry from all the other chemistries is that you can actually carry out this chemistry in the presence of all the other chemistries and all the other chemistries can be carried out while you have the click uh, residues present, more or less. Of course there are things that can react, but uh, more or less so that you have complete independence of the two uh, chemistry uh, toolboxes uh, that that work for you. So that is actually what distinguish and, and make it possible to build these molecular robots to attach very complicated protein constructs on the surfaces. Uh, in nanoscience, for example, you want to make a monolayer of a molecule on the surface. You can do that with click reactions. They will probably even align uh, in the right way uh, on the surface when you do that. So this is, uh, you know, great uh, strides forward uh, from a situation you didn't have before. Oh, thank you, sir. I personally feel that uh, the question boils down to how to kill a bacteria by physical means or by chemical means. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, physical means of uh, doing it, like uh, very nano uh, pins which can prick bacteria and can kill it. Uh, but then here I understand that uh, physical methods are much more uh, eco-friendly than chemical methods, but I personally feel that the highlight is the eco-friendly nature of the technology which is coming up. Uh, is that right? Uh, again, the last part. Um, uh, it, I think I'll go down in front, actually, because I can't hear you up here. <laughs> Sorry, say it again. Now I can hear everything. Um, <clears throat> the question boils down to how to kill a bacteria. Yeah. Uh, you can use physical methods, you can have chemical methods. Okay. Normally, uh, I'm an entomologist, I study insects. We have the cicadas, which have got a very interesting uh, 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 body structure, which has got very nano things. Yeah. Body structure, yeah. So you can use it as a fine to survive. That's a very clear method of killing bacteria. Yeah. Like, and antibiotics. But here, in this particular case, chemistry can come up with that level of confrontation. Yes, you have uh, no resistance, so you have actually very high efficiency as long as you have negative charge on the cell surface. That's the only requirement for this to, to work. I think that we actually, in material sciences, using that uh, technology, uh, for example, with the titanium dioxide, which is a photo, uh, photolytically create radicals and kills bacteria on the surfaces of buildings or 
wars, yeah. The students. One question, please. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah. Professor Model, one of the interesting takeaways, as far uh, as I am concerned, was that uh, you said that uh, don't be ca uh, carried away with the hype on electric cars. Wait for the hydrogen car. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very interesting. That, that's my thought. I have. To actually stayed away from uh, electric cars in Denmark because I was waiting for the hydrogen car. But now the infrastructure is so much in place for the electric cars that I don't think we'll ever have a hydrogen car. And this is an uh, opportunity, I think that's the case for most of the Western countries, and it's a great opportunity for other societies to actually jump onto the hydrogen car and get that to work because it's much better than the electric car in the long run. Yeah, another related question. You showed a slide with bamboo in one yeah. of the slides. And uh, I was wondering how, could you elaborate more on that, how bamboo is uh, being projected as a material for the future, especially in chemistry angle from that structure building or something. And we were in Vietnam and they have a, a huge production of uh, bamboo textiles. Uh, recently we visited Vietnam and they have a huge production of bamboo uh, textiles. They are have a lot of uh, advantages over cotton textiles, so uh, maybe there is a future for bamboo. Uh, I don't know if you have a lot of bamboo here, but... Uh, yeah, we do have. We have <laughs> hundreds of its own species in <laughs> India. Yes. Thank you. Some students have some questions, and there's no stupid questions in this world. All questions are legal. I will ask one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like one of the takeaway uh, I, I found in your in your speech was like usually people advocate like you stick to a discipline, you stick to a field, and keep working there. Whereas you were telling that like occasionally or like at regular intervals, keep switching yes. field discipline and yes, yeah, that was an interesting. Yeah, I think that's very important actually because uh, it's not uh, you if you are within a society, within a field, within a uh, institute, and you just stay in there. Uh, it's relatively sure that we, you will not find anything really groundbreaking because that happens on the surface towards the other disciplines. But, and when you have the technology in both disciplines, you are able to both do and also to visualize what is, what is the novelty there. And then, if you don't find anything new, you will be working in a new area and then you will be able to observe. And if you have odd behavior like we have had in many cases, odd behaviors in expected uh, results, and then we have gone for those odd behaviors and it's always been a success. I think this can be an important takeaway for everyone. Yeah. Like the switch discipline, keep switching and most of your in innovations are... Yeah, and like keep studying all your life, actually. Yeah, yeah. One, one, more, one more question, like... Yes. Me. Yeah, so uh, all, all your discussions about molecules and like uh, synthesis was like, you were explaining more like structurally, like you were looking at the physical, the, I mean, that, I mean, maybe like you would have done that for communicating it to people. So, I mean, kind of a random question I have is, so these days when you design molecules, when you work with molecules, I mean, theoretically, uh, are you thinking about that structurally or like you will look into quantum mathematical models of molecules too? Yeah, so we always combine uh, the use of molecular modeling uh, with our synthetic efforts because uh, we found that uh, we are not able by ourselves to uh, visualize how things work in three dimensions uh, at least. Some of us are, some of us aren't and uh, we can actually uh, do away with a lot of waste time by making sure that something is actually possible before we do any synthesis. But we also use it in design where we're actually looking at the interaction of the electrons between molecules that recognize each other. We look at stability of particular scaffolds and how they work together and so on. So I think molecular modeling, in particular uh, molecular modeling using force fields where you can do quite large structures is a very important thing for uh, in particular the field between organic chemistry and biochemistry. Uh, we predict a lot of things and sometimes it works. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, uh. 
Hello. Uh, is Hi. it audible? Uh, so I have a couple of questions. You explained about uh, the possibility of using click reaction in uh, the layered materials. Like I do work in uh, nanochemistry, especially in 2D materials. And yes. Uh, so will it be possible to introduce that to delayer uh, the layer stacked ones like 2D materials when it is 10 layer stacked? Can we introduce this and then break the water walls force of attraction? Yeah, so uh, we have... Uh, we haven't worked with materials ourselves, but I know from colleagues they are working on graphene, they are oxidizing the graphene, and they are substituting with A sites on the graphene, and they're getting the reaction, uh, click reaction to work to install things on graphene, for example. It could also be a uh, aptis sitting on a, s a silicon surface uh, with an A site. We have done that actually. We have made nanowires that are uh, coated with a single layer of a uh, protease. Uh, we have made antibodies that uh, recognize peptides on surfaces and so on. So a lot of different things you can do with click reactions on surfaces. Uh, another question is like you showed one slide where we can use uh, the click chemistry to conjugate uh, three different molecules which one which can go to the cell, one which can do the image and the third one which can uh, do the, I mean, help in a uh, cellular killing, like apoptosis. Yeah. So I just wanted, because I, we do working in uh, gold nanoclusters for bioimaging, and then uh, we are doing uh, attachment of drug delivery, for uh, making that for drug delivery. So I can we use that, the click chemistry to join three, uh, maybe three, three nanometer worth, diameter worth gold nanoparticles together to do all these things together will it work? yeah so that's we are working on that uh, particular project right now we have the molecule that inhibits the apoptosis inhibitor exia okay. uh, we have uh, the uh, molecule that can pass into the cells and we are currently having uh, the, the research is ongoing with finding the best candidate for recognition of the cancer cells we have no problem in making the click reaction work i'm sure Thanks a lot for the help. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor. It's a yeah. great honor to hear you. My question is uh, not about the chemistry, but it's that I'm a sleep scientist. So the question is, how was your sleep when you heard you are going to get the Nobel Prize. Well, uh, I, you get to know about that at 11 o'clock in the morning. They call you, you mm -hmm. take the phone. Uh, I was a little bit annoyed because it was a Swedish number and a Swedish company had been very insistent on selling instruments to me. So I go, yes! <laughs> and they say, well, this is a Nobel Prize committee. Um, <laughs> yes. So I uh, very quickly found out that, that was okay, it was Nobel Prize Committee and it was actually going to happen. But then you are not allowed to tell anybody for an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, after an hour, I tried to call my wife and she was in a meeting, so she just said, I cannot now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the, uh, the uh, press started to call me from all over the world. So every 15 seconds, I got a phone call from some, uh, somebody. In the so how's your life now? And then uh, we had a celebration in the afternoon, so I was completely exhausted when I came home, and I slept like a dream. <laughs> Income too. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Hello, sir. Hi. I'm a PG first year student in MSc Chemistry. So my simple question is that, is there anything you have ever wondered about I never had a chance to explore or ask about? Millions. I think that uh, this is uh, always a, a, a conundrum, that you have so many ideas, you have so many things you want to do, and it's so difficult to do them, it's so time-consuming to do them, so you cannot do them all. And there's always a choice, and that's where your intuition and your imagination and your association is very important, to choose the right path, the right things to do. So, of course, you have thoughts all the time, if you are a very good researcher, you can't let those thoughts go. So you actually, uh, I personally actually, before I go to sleep, start dreaming about, uh, you know, before I really fall asleep, I start thinking about what to do next day, how to solve the problems, and 
uh, what are the problems going to be in the lab, how are the problems going to be with the PhDs, the postdocs, but also with the chemistry, how can I solve this problem, uh, how can I help my students solve this problem. Thank you, sir. Greetings, sir. So, uh, it was a very interesting presentation. So, I have worked on E. coli expression system. So, you are seeing that E. coli, when we work with uh, degrading proteins like endolysin, proteases, obviously we face difficulty in getting the protein. Recovery will be very less. E. coli expression. Yeah. So, you have split the gene into two parts and it has been expressed. Yes. Can you say me the uh, points which you undertake while splitting the gene? Is there anything like a uh, different chain of the protein was split into? Well, in our case, we were probably a little bit lucky because there's really two domains that come together around the loop that we clip. And also we found that, the, to go more scientifically, the length of the bridge that we make is very important for the activity. So. Uh, I think that it's possible for most proteins to divide it up in dem folding domains, but then you re need to refold them and to get them to actually have the shape of the final protease. And that was a bit of a problem because it was pretty un insoluble on its own, so we had to actually take it into urea at high concentration and then dilute the urea out. We got the dimer of the two fractions sitting together and then we could click them. So normally from in E. coli expression, BL21 cells, it will form the inclusion bodies. So that we go for urea we, solubation. We, we got inclusion bodies inclusion too, bodies. Yeah, for both fragments. They are pretty insoluble. Uh, but specifically I want to know for degrading proteins, like which uh, the bacterial cells will be very resistant to this endolysin and those type of protein. So expressing them in bacteria will be very difficult. Yeah. Is there any points I can consider while expressing those proteins in E. coli? No, I think it's the same thing because you would always find proteins that are, that's so many proteins in the, in the organism, always find proteins that are target for particular proteins. Uh, second question is, you have said that uh, so most of the enzymes were modified through quick chemistry. What would be the stability of the uh, enzymes after modification? The activity is higher than the uh, natural protease. So the activity is actually increasing a little bit. I don't know what, whether the distances are different or whether the dynamics of the protein is different, but it's a little bit better than the natural one. Uh, my third question is, you have said that for kids you have a video to learn organic chemistry. Yeah. Is there a link that we can access it? Uh, from our institute, you mean? No, from uh, India I'm saying. From, can I access that links? Uh, for learning organic Learning those videos, yeah. Simple uh, well, I will, I will actually probably start that next year, uh, putting out our teaching on the YouTube. But other, we don't have it now yet. I'm, I was just finished making all the videos for the advanced course this year, so, yeah. Thank you, sir. So can we get your mail ID? What? Mail ID. Email ID. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> ah, email. Mildale, my last name, Mildale, at Kim, C H E M K U D K. Thank you, sir. Here, here, I'm here. Yeah. Sir, uh, we say that behind every successful man is a woman, and you have brought your woman behind your success. And my question is to Dr. Fedria. Uh, Ma'am, uh, what is your, you can see the hall, majority are women. So, what is your guidance to the women aspirants who want to uh, take up science and research as a career, Ma'am? Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. And um, just a slight adjustment to your question. I'm not behind him. I am with him. <laughs> I think it's uh, very amazing to see so many young women here. 
and this was the same when I was at ISA and at the University of Kerala. Or Kerala. And so I think um, the future can be bright for women. However, I also noticed that many of the rooms I went in with my husband, it was predominantly men. So something happens after women have invested in studying and getting their PhDs. When you look at the women in the leadership, the women in the top faculty positions, the women who are uh, making the policies, the women who are making the decision, there are very, very few women. Of course, you have some great success stories. You have Indra Nui in the industry. You have Kiran at uh, Biocon. And you have the 54 amazing women who contributed to the landing on the moon. I think that was awesome. But we don't really hear a lot about them. And so you have to be confident in yourself and be brave. But it's not just for the women, it's also for the men, it's for everybody. Because having women participate equally or as equal as possible in all aspects of society, in all levels, at the high levels, at the top levels, having women participate in the decision making, it makes for better outcomes, for better solutions. So I say to you, women and men, work together to have more women into the higher positions, into the decision-making positions in society. And this is because it's for the entire family, the entire society to make that mindset where after a woman is educated, she does not drop off her career after she has her child. You have to think of solutions, how you can have a harmonic family that enables women to continue their careers and continue to get into the high positions in society and have many more examples, not just, the, you know, I know you have a female president, but you need to have many more. There are like 700 million um, females in, the, um, in there. You need to have more than one or two examples. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And one more last question to Professor Melvin. Good afternoon, sir. Hi. Sir, I'm great. I'm very grateful to be here. And my, I'm from Andhra Pradesh, so I'm studying now in Central University of Kerala. Yeah. So my question was related to that click reaction, click reaction. The team I understand was exact group and the alkane group, they, in the presence of copper, in the presence of oxygen, is going to react. Yeah. But the copper is, is, when it related to biological system, copper is some toxic to the biological system. Yeah, so, so this reaction actually only works in the absence of oxygen because copper very readily oxidized to copper two ah, yes, copper from two. copper one. Ah, yes. uh, and it needs, it's only copper one that's active. The contracted copper two is not active at all in this reaction. So you need to maintain the copper one activity and you need it to avoid completely the conversion from copper one to copper two because in each step of that, the oxygen that oxidizes it makes oxygen radicals and they are the toxic species that kills your cells and damage your proteins. So oxygen radicals are extremely important in this reaction to avoid. Thank you, sir. Yeah? Yes, I got it. Thank you, sir.